Hey everybody, this is Matthew Naiman from Shutterstock.com. Today, we're looking at the Lucent Collection from Rocketstock. Lucent is a collection of high-quality lens flare elements, optically captured in 4K using over 40 different lenses and focal lengths. The Lucent Collection will help add warmth and light to any project, and is designed to be compatible with every major nonlinear editing system out there. Today, we're going to use the Lucent Warm Pack in Adobe After Effects, Adobe Premiere, and Final Cut Pro, so let's get to it. All right, everybody, here we are in Adobe After Effects, and as you can see, I've picked some stock footage of an astronaut floating in space, hanging on to the International Space Station. I don't think this is real footage from space, because the Earth is flat, am I right? I'm a guy making a video on the internet, I need to believe the Earth is flat. The Earth isn't flat. Anyway, uh, so here we are in space, we got a, looks like a little animated Earth floating around under our astronaut, and everything looks great, but it looks like uh, he's pretty brightly illuminated on our left side uh, and the earth is there but I feel like in space there'd be some some lens flare going on so if we jump into Lucent um, I think I'm going to use some elements from Lucent Warm uh, and I'm going to layer two different lens flares here to give sort of a very uh, raw and realistic feel to the shot so the first thing I'm going to take a look at is this uh, prime 14 millimeter lens flare you can see the actual element actually makes it into frame and these were all shot with gorgeous lenses at different focal lengths so you can match any footage that you might be trying to add a little bit of light or a little bit of shine to. Let's go back to our composition and grab our lens flare and drop it on top and see what happens. Oh, well, I immediately noticed two things. I noticed that our footage is too big because my composition is only in 1080p and I also noticed that our astronaut is gone. Let's solve these problems one at a time. By hitting S with my lens flare element highlighted, I'll twirl open the scale controls, and by grabbing the 100 and dragging, I can scale my lens flare up and down. It's going to be right at around 47% or around 50% because these are double the resolution of 1080p. Um, I'm also, while I'm under the scale controls, uh, as if I shy this, you'll see I think our light source is on the left based on his lighting and the shadow that he's casting onto the ISS. Um, I'm going to want to flip this lens flare around and also probably make it upside down. And there's two ways to do that. I can hit R to twirl open the rotation controls, which are under transform. Highlight the rotation and type 180. This will push the light down into the bottom left corner which lines up with our footage much better. The other option is if I just wanted to flip it horizontally, I could return the rotation, click scale, unlock the scale tangents, and minus that value. And now it flips horizontally, which would also look okay with our footage. But I'm just gonna hit Command Z or Control Z if you're on a PC or Control Z if you're in America uh, a couple of times until that's rotated back around to there. And I'm going to scale it back up a bit just so that the source of the flare is off frame for the duration of my comp. Wonderful. How can we go about applying this to the footage underneath? Well, the first thing we're going to have to do is hit this button down here that says Toggle Switches and Modes. This is going to disable all of our shutter speed and frame blending and blending mode and 3D GAC. And instead it's going to give us these. Uh, track Mat, which we're not going to be using right now, and Mode. What we want to do is change the blending mode to something that's going to turn black transparent or, depending on how extreme we want the effect, is going to additively apply this layer to the layer below. Let's look at how these two different options function. The first thing I'm going to do is take our lens flare layer and set it from normal to screen. Screen knocks out the darkest parts of an image and keeps the brightest parts applying it almost with a kind of transparency to the layer below. I could scale it and place it. And if I hit play, we can see our footage with some lens flare on it. But we can also play with the values of this lens flare by going up to effects, color correction, and dropping a levels on the lens flare footage. Levels is going to let us control the distance between hard black and hard white. And if I push the image closer towards the blacks or open it up closer towards the lights, you'll see that because it has a screen blending mode, uh, I'm going to set it to normal now just to show you what I'm doing, more of the image will be pure black or more of the image will be pure white, affecting how that blending mode 
applies this footage to the layer underneath. This gives you a lot of very, very fine control over the way that your lens flare looks. So if I mostly want to preserve this kind of green aura of the lens flare and not so much haze out the entire image, I can do that by adjusting the levels on my lens flare. For a slightly different flavor, I could go down to mode and instead of screen, I could set the mode to add. Let's see what that does. Add is not simply allowing the layer to sit on top of the layer below, but it is using the lens flare layer additively and actually changing the exposure of the below layer. This can sometimes lead to very, very realistic results, but I think here it's a little extreme. Even if I play with my controls a bit, it's just doing a little bit too much, and I don't like this area blowing out here. So I'm gonna hit undo a couple of times and go back to screen. Jumping back over to my project window, again under warm, I'm going to pop open my 25mm flares. I have no idea what kind of camera this was originally shot with, and much less what kind of lens they used, but I like to mix and match flares till they look visually correct, and don't worry too much about matching up the focal length of the flare with the focal length of the shot. I'm going to grab this guy, Prime 25, number 25, and drop it on top, and let's have a look at this. I'm going to bring it down to about 50%, and if I hit play, We'll see that this one is sort of a little beam of light coming out of a corner that also fades back off. So we're going to use that as, I don't know, maybe some light source has rotated into position. Here, I'm going to just want to flip it horizontally. Set this to minus 50, lock those tangents back together, and set the blending mode to screen. I'm actually going to scale it up just a tad and move it to where I want it. You see, I don't want to move it too far because then the edge will become present. However, that can be dealt with with a quick levels correction and knocking down the blacks a bit. There we go. That's looking all right. And then uh, I'm going to jump to the end of this clip, set the end of my timeline, and then I'm going to go up to Effects, uh, sorry, Composition, Trim Comp to Work Area. My work area is now just as long as my longest flare. And I'm going to scale up our base footage a little bit. And then let's pan it. So I'm going to start with the footage to the extreme left of the comp. Hit P to twirl open my position keyframes. And hit the stopwatch to add a keyframe. I'm going to jump to my last keyframe and slide the astronaut all the way to the right. And now you'll see and as you can see my lens flares appear to be motivated by the camera moving towards a slightly brighter source I could add a little bit of camera shake to this or I could rotate the camera a little bit and time the lens flares with the camera moving but I think this gives you a good idea about how to use these lens flares in Adobe After Effects but why don't we jump over to Adobe Premiere and have a look there all right, everybody, here we are in Adobe Premiere. We've got this great clip from Shutterstock.com of a seemingly very happy lady in a boat. Look at that smile. So this lady appears to be very heavily side lit. The sun is probably somewhere up over here. And I'd like to think if we were shooting this with a nice wide prime lens without any kind of lens shade on it, we'd probably be getting some flare in the shot. So I'm all for adding some. Why don't we hop into the assets and into my Lucent Warm Pack, which I decided is the one to use for this. And there was a 50 millimeter prime flare I really quite liked. 50 mils are kind of renowned for often having the fewest optical elements in them and therefore giving really, really beautiful lens flares. First thing we're gonna do is grab our lens flare clip and chuck it on top of our footage and see what happens. Not much. First thing we'll notice is our footage is way too big because once again, I'm working in 1080p and the footage comes in at glorious 4K. So I'm gonna right click on it and hit set to frame size. Our footage is now entirely contained within our 1080p frame. And I'm also going to find the moment the flare actually comes up, probably right around there. And that's where we're going to start our clip. And that's going to run to about there, which just about makes sense. Cut off the tail. A handy tip I can give you, I tend to use the Final Cut Pro shortcuts for Adobe Premiere. So if I need my blade tool, I hit B. Or if I need my arrow tool, I hit A. 
Whereas a lot of you are probably hitting C for your blade tool uh, and V for your arrow tool. If you're coming from Final Cut Pro, especially Final Cut Pro 7, and you kind of have those keystrokes burned into your brain, uh, you can simply go up to Premiere Pro CC, keyboard shortcuts, and Adobe is so smart, they decided to give you Final Cut Pro 7 or Avid Media Composer presets. I really, really love that. The first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to get our footage facing the right way. Our sun is on the left of frame, if we remember, but this lens flare is on the right of frame. Very easy to remedy. I'm going to pop over to Effects and then search for Horizontal. The effect I want is called Horizontal Flip. I'm going to grab the Horizontal Flip, pop it onto my lens flare, and magically everything's over on the other side. Fantastic. The next thing I'm going to want to do is make sure that my lens flare is selected, go up to Effects Controls, and we're going to change the blending mode from Normal to Screen. You'll see that Screen lets the darker parts of the image fade away to nothing, to zero, and makes the brighter parts of the image overlay our footage. If we were instead to go to Add, you'll see that Premiere actually uses the brightness values of this layer to change the brightness values of our bottom layer. It's more than just an overlay, it's actually kind of pumping up the volume of the layer below. I think I prefer to use Screen. And I'm also going to jump over to my Effects tab and search for Lumetri. Close all these guys, we don't need any presets or speed looks. What we want is Lumetri Color. I'm going to drop Lumetri Color onto our lens flare layer. Lumetri is really a wonderful piece of software that's given to you free with Adobe Premiere, which gives you fantastic control over your image, but I'm just going to use it for its basic curves adjustment. I'm going to put a dot on my curve right in the middle. This will allow me to pull up and down the highlights of my lens flare layer, affecting how the screen mode shows us that lens flare on top of our footage. I just want to crush down in the dark areas a little bit. Actually, maybe pull up the whites just a tad. And there we go. Let's have a look at how this looks so far. As you can see, our lens flare comes in just as the camera pans left. Quite believable, but I think it needs to be a little bit stronger. Jump back into Lumetri, and let's bring up that point a bit, and that point a little bit. And let's have a look. There you go, she's having even more fun because it is so sunny out. I hope she remembered her sunscreen. Anyway, let's hop over to Final Cut Pro and take a look at how we can use some of these elements to brighten up our footage there. Alright everybody, and here we are once again in Final Cut Pro, and as you can see from Shutterstock, I have this very nice clip of a lady opening the window on an airplane. Well, opening the window shade if she was opening the window, this would be a much gorier clip of her being sucked out the window. Anyway. Um, so, uh, one thing I always say I love about Final Cut Pro is I absolutely love their scrubbing tools right in the media browser. Fantastic. Pops open the window. You can look at stuff full quality right in your big main viewing window. Love it. Now, I'd sorted out this uh, Prime 32mm 04 that I quite liked before. So, let's drag it down on top of our footage and take a look. Now, I'm immediately presented with a few problems using this clip in Final Cut Pro. First of all, it's too short, simply goes away, and then we have footage that we still need to fill. Another problem with it is it's facing the wrong way, and another problem with it is it's too small. Let's deal with facing the wrong way and too small first. I'm going to highlight the clip, jump over to our transform tools, and let's rotate it so that it's coming down from the top of the window. Fantastic. But it's cut off down on the bottom, and all these edges fading off to black will show as soon as I change the blending mode. Let's take a look at that. Blend mode, screen. Oh, well, that doesn't look very convincing now, does it? There's a few ways to fix it. We could color correct down the black so that it fades off properly. We could put a feathered mask around it. But in this case, I'm actually going to scale up the footage until it's big enough. I have the capacity to do that because this footage is 4K and my base footage is only 720p. So I have tons of latitude to scale this footage. Already you can see what an improvement that is and that I very cleverly picked a clip that times properly with her opening the window. Almost like I do this for a living. Now let's deal with the problem of this clip being too short. 
I don't want to adjust the timing of the beginning because it opens right in sync with the flare coming up. So instead what I want to do is cut my clip right at that point and then jump over to my time tools. I'm going to go down and set automatic speed for this clip and now you can see that this extra little tab opens up on top of my footage. If I grab the handle of my footage, it operates as normal. I can sort of shrink it in and out, but I can't drag it past its original length. However, if I grab the handle up at the top and drag out, now you'll see that it slowed this clip down to 34% and fills out the rest of my clip. There is, however, a problem with this technique. Let's take a look. Suddenly everything looks sort of very chunky there. You can see that we do not have a lot of frames in there. But we can jump over to our time window again, go down to video quality, and turn on optical flow. Optical flow will do its best to interpolate data between the frames that I've slowed down. This wouldn't necessarily work if someone was running or jumping or if we had a car chase. There's not enough data, but these lens flares operate rather slowly, which means you can see that that gap in frames is actually nicely filled and is much smoother than it was before. I'm actually going to drag this out just a little further so that the flare will go away, coinciding maybe with her leaning forwards. And then I'm going to end both of my clips here and hit delete. And let's have a look at our lens flare. Very nice. I like it. It is always super helpful to remember that you can slow down or speed up your lens flares to match your footage. If we feel the lens flare is too strong, we do have the ability to go down to color correction, color curves, Drop it on top. And then under curves, just like we did in Premiere, we can adjust our Luma curve to make the flare dimmer or brighter as we see fit. But I quite like it stock. I think it looks great. Let's take one last look. Love it. Between the smiling lady on the boat from Premiere and this lady on an airplane here, and actually the guy in space from After Effects, I'm dying to get out of the office. So I'm going to leave you here. I hope you found this quick look at the Lucent Collection from Rocketstock.com useful. You can find other great packs like this and tutorials to help you with them at Shutterstock.com, and we'll be here to help you get the most of them. This is Matthew Naiman from Shutterstock.com saying, see you next time.